Jin Hong. So today I'm going to be showing with you guys one of the favorite looks that I've ever created for this channel. I am a huge fan of Chinese makeup, hair, and clothes. So I'm really happy that I finally got a chance to film something like this for you guys with Chinese New Year's coming really soon. So today I'm going to be showing you guys a very minimalistic makeup look. I didn't use many products to create this look so I feel like it's really simple and easy to recreate. I'm focusing on using gold and reds because they are colors that are most symbolic for Chinese New Year's. I'm also going to be showing you guys how to create this hairstyle. It's a very cute and simple double braided loop hairstyle that looks very traditionally Chinese but is super easy to create. It's also a really like secure hairstyle so I could like I can like flip my head back and forth and shit is not going to move. So I feel like this is a perfect hairstyle to wear with your dress for Chinese New Year's because even though it's very cute and it looks a bit precariously perched on the side of your head, it's not going to budge so you can have your fun without worrying about your hair. I am super 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 excited for Chinese New Year's if you guys couldn't tell already with everything that's like going on in this video but I hope you guys enjoy my first get ready with me style video. Alright so first as always. Um, I'm starting off with a primer. I'm still using up the rest of this Benefit one. As always, I'm just applying this on the sides of my nose and on my smile lines where my makeup tends to crease when I'm speaking a lot. And then I'm going to use a bit also on my nose and on the inner parts of my cheeks to blur out any pores that I may have. Next, I'm going to be using my Etude House Precious Mineral Any Cushion. Um, I'm almost done using this. So I can uh, go check out a cruelty-free pack next. I've seen some on the market, but I'm not exactly sure which one that I want to try out. So if you guys have any recommendations for uh, cruelty-free or vegan uh, BB packs, please let me know in the comment section below and it would be greatly appreciated. So I've talked about this before with you guys. Um, that my skin was having like a really bad reaction to a few products that a company had sent me. I stopped using them and as you can see like my face like it has cleared up immensely. I can finally use all of my light coverage BB creams again and I just feel super fucking happy. This product is pretty layerable so for places where I do still have a bit of acne I'm just going to go over those spots once again with more product. I'm still using up the rest of this Maybelline concealer, but recently I've been liking to take a bit on my finger and rather than using it to conceal my under eye circles, I will apply it on any spots where I have blemishes. I feel like this method has been extremely convenient for me recently when I just want to get out of the house really quick and not spend that much time putting on concealer. Because I can just pat it straight onto the blemish and then I'll blend around a bit with my fingers. And it's super fast because I don't have to like fiddle with tools or anything, I can just use my fingers. Alright, so lastly as always I'm going in with my 100% pure foundation powder and I'm just going to lightly set the makeup with my e.l.f. Flawless Face brush. Okay wait, I always forget to do this. Um, I forgot to apply my under eye concealer. I'm using Jelly Pong Pong's Undetectable Concealer and I actually got this in um, a cruelty free beauty subscription bag from So Susan and I already did a video on that quite some time ago so if you guys haven't seen that video already I will link it down below. This concealer actually works the best for my under eye circles. So I just take my finger and I take the product and then I apply it under my eyes to conceal the dark circles. I like to use this method because this product is pretty stiff, so I actually can't work with it unless I warm it up with my fingertips first. I feel like if you have extremely dark under eye circles, this would be a really amazing product for you to check out because it has pink undertones and it's such a dense concealer that as soon as you put it on, your entire face like just brightens up. I wonder if you guys can tell, but my voice is a bit like <laughs> raspy and I'm kind of struggling to speak because um, last weekend was Anime Los Angeles which I have a huge vlog coming up for that. But anyway, um, Anime Los Angeles was just last weekend and my voice is like really struggling to recover. Even though normally by now I would be totally fine, but it's still hard for me to speak and I'm struggling. <laughs> Alright, so I zoomed you guys in and I know it's a bit awkward for me to be talking to you guys when you can't even see the rest of my face. But now we're going to start on the eyes. Today I'm focusing on a really minimalistic gold eye look. 
That's because Chinese makeup styles tend to be very minimalistic. They don't wear very heavy or dark shadows. And golds and reds are the most representative of Chinese New Year's. So those are the two colors that I'm going to be using in today's makeup look. First of all, as always, I am starting off with my Wet n Wild primer. So next, taking the most pigmented shimmery gold eyeshadow that I have, which is from my New Dude Volume 2 palette from The Balm, I'm going to apply this all over my eyelid. Oh god, I got some in my hair, what the fuck? Alright, so next I'm going to be highlighting the inner corners of my eyes. So I'm going into my Anastasia Beverly Hills self-made palette. I'm taking the color Treasure and I'm just going to apply this on the inner corners. Since I use an extremely bright gold eyeshadow, I need to use a very bright white eyeshadow so that it actually shows up. Alright, so next using my ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in the color sequin, I'm just going to take my finger and apply this on the lower outer third corner of my lower lash line. Uh, because the eyeshadows that I'm going to use on top are going to be matte, this just creates a base for me so that I still have a bit of shimmers. Alright, so next taking one of my favorite brushes, which is the e.l.f. Small Precision Brush, I'm going into my 88 Original Palette from Coastal Scents. I'm taking the darkest red that they have and I'm just going to be applying this over the ColourPop shadow. And I'm going to slowly blend out the color so that there are no harsh lines. And then I'm slowly blending the reds into the white eyeshadow that I use on my inner corners. Then taking a dark burgundy color from my Nude Dude palette again, I'm just going to be darkening up the reds just a little bit. Okay, so that's it for the eyeshadows. Then I'm going to be going in with a black liquid liner and I'm just going to be lining my eyes. I feel like black liner and gold eyeshadow is a really classic and easy combination. You can honestly never go wrong with it. Okay, now I'm just adding my favorite fiber mascara, as always, to my top and bottom lashes. I really really love that mascara because it's a bit of a thicker consistency so I have really thin um, lower lashes so this mascara is my favorite to use on my lower lashes to really build up the volume and make it darker. I feel like now that I've applied mascara the eyes look a lot more balanced. So next I'm going to be trying out my new lashes. These are um, ones from Ardell and I purchased these two days ago so this is my first time using these. I expect a lot from these because Ardell is my favorite um, eyelash brand. And I almost forgot to do this, and it probably doesn't even matter because you can't really see my eyebrows anyway, but I almost forgot to fill in my eyebrows. As always, I'm taking my angled brush from IT Cosmetics. And going back into my palette from Coastal Scents, I'm going to take the darkest purple eyeshadow that they have and I'm just going to run this color through my entire eyebrow. And then I'm just going to take a, the spoolie on the other end of my brush and I'm just going to brush the uh, color into the fibers of my eyebrow. Holy shit, I made my eyebrows huge today. That's fine, you can't really see them anyway. Alright, so that's it for the eyes. We are done! Alright, so we're going to finish off the rest of the face. First off, I'm going to be starting with a matte red lipstick from NYX. I 
As always, I'm applying product to the inner parts of my lips only, and then I'm going to blend it out for a softer gradient effect with my fingertips. Alright, so I have my base color on, then I'm going in with my NYX Liquid Lip Suede in the color Vintage, and I really like layering liquid lipsticks onto other lip products so I can adjust the shade of the lip color. I've been using this technique a lot recently, and I feel like this is a really awesome technique because you can create so many colors out of the products that you already own with just a few liquid lipsticks. Again, I'm only applying it on the inner parts of my lips, and then I'm just going to blend it out with my fingertips. Alright, so now that I've toned down the lip color, it looks a lot more suitable for the makeup look that we have. I'm going to top it off with a bit of bright red lip gloss. Alright, so that's it for the lips. So today I'm using my Becca highlight, which I haven't used in a long time actually. This has really fine shimmers, so it's going to give me a more natural highlight. So I'm just going to be applying this on the tip of my nose and the bridge of my nose. Oh fuck, this is the finger I used to blend my lipstick. And then I'm going to be applying it on the high points of my cheeks. To make sure that my highlight is visible in every angle, I'm going to first apply it on the high points of my cheeks. I'm going to blend it closer into the middle of my face. And then I'm going to take a bit more product. And I'm going to, again, apply it on the highest point of my cheek, but also blend it upwards in a C shape. Alright, so that's it for the makeup look. And I feel like this is a very classic makeup look that works very well for Chinese New Year's. As I said before, reds and golds are colors that you really can't go wrong with for Chinese New Year's. Alright, so now let's move into the hair. So I wanted to create a style that looks traditionally Chinese. Traditional Chinese updos are very intricate, so today I've created a style that still looks traditionally Chinese, but with a cuter twist and that is super easy to create. Alright, so first off, as always, I want to make sure that my middle part is directly in the middle. So taking my ratchet comb, I'm just going to be sectioning it off straight down the middle. Alright, next you're going to want to comb your hair. So I've sectioned one half of my hair out of the way, and now we're going to focus on the first half of the hair. So we are going to start with a French braid. So I... oh god, my hair is so dark, I hope you guys can see this. So where the back of my ear is, I'm going to trace it upwards and I'm going to take a small section of hair right here. Alright, so I have about a one inch section of hair. I'm going to split this into three sections. Alright, so I have three sections. I'm going to braid once. I'm going to take a small piece of hair and add it to the section that I'm holding. And then I'm going to cross it under again as a regular braid. Then I'm going to repeat the process with every side piece that I'm holding. So with this piece now, I'm going to take another small section of hair from the side, adding it to my original piece that I'm holding, and I'm going to bring it under as a regular braid. Alright, so I finished the French braid and I'm going to stop right at the base of my head rather than going down all the way to the nape. I'm going to stop right where it reaches the back of my ear. And for this style, it works best if I keep my French braid as close to my ear as possible. Alright, so now taking a clear elastic, I'm just going to tie this off. So now I'm just loosening the braid to create a fluffy and rounder effect rather than having it stay flat against my head. So because I've loosened the braid, you can see that it's more visible when I look uh, straight on. Just make sure to tighten the braid at the base. And then we are going to repeat that process on the other side. Alright, so that's part one done. From here, I'm going to take each pigtail and I'm just going to braid straight down in a normal braid. So I've braided all to the bottom and then I'm going to secure this again with another clear elastic. Alright, so now that we have our two pigtails, I'm going to take one section, I'm going to pull it upwards, and I'm going to create a loop. 
and it's going to tuck right behind my head right here. And taking a few bobby pins, I'm just going to secure this in place. Alright, so we have our two loops. And this is basically the hairstyle. Um, it's very simple and it's very easy to create, but it still looks very traditionally Chinese. Alright, so now we're going to start to try to hide the elastics and the bobby pins that are sticking out. So I'm taking a light pink ribbon, and you can pick any ribbon that matches your dress, but I'm going to be doing light pink today. I'm going to tie it right at the base of where we tied our first elastic. So I've looped it on top and making sure that the ends are even, I'm just going to tie it off. Alright, so I feel like it's still pretty cute if I just wore it like this with the ribbons straight down, but I'm going to tie it off into a bow. I realized that it's kind of hard to see the ribbon because what do you know, it's the exact same color as my backdrop, but um, this is how it looks like. I think it's just super cute um, and really girly, just a bit of ribbon hanging from the bottom of your braid. Alright, so that's it for the ribbons. Um, hopefully you guys can see better if I hold my hands behind it, but that is what the ribbons look like. Alright, so to hide the bobby pins that are holding our loops in place, you can take some fake flowers and you can pin it right on top to uh, mask the pins. You can also put another one back here so when you face forward you can see the flowers on the side of your head. I've inserted a bobby pin in the back but you can also glue a clip right at the base of the flower. Um, for this video I'm just going to be placing one single flower on the side of my head. So I'm holding it to my head and I'm going to bobby pin the bottom petals into my hair. And if you take a second bobby pin and cross it in an X over the first bobby pin, that's a super secure way to keep whatever is in your hair in place. Alright, so that's it for this hair. Um, I feel like the hairstyle is super cute and simple and easy to wear on its own, but you can easily change up the style with whatever accessories that you have. Alright, so that's it for this look. I am very, very happy with how it turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys again next time.